All right, guys, so today, fastest way to build a Shopify app from scratch, which at this point might also be the best way to start your own system as a service business or a SaaS business, because it's actually way easier to build a profitable Shopify app than it would be to, let's say, create the next profitable Android or iOS app. And that's mainly because your main target audience is purely merchants who have money to invest in their business and if your app solves a problem for them, you can justify a higher price point. Now, before we get there, I absolutely need you to understand what you're getting into here because app development is quite advanced and it's not even remotely as beginner friendly as freelancing, for example. And that's why I put together this extremely important comparison just to give you a better overview and some more realistic expectations. So here we are in the PowerPoint of Truth and Justice, where we have apps versus freelancing. And we're going to start with freelancing because there's a little less to cover. And if you want to get into that, you would need to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript, which is basically the web development stack. And then you would also need to learn Shopify Liquid as Shopify's backend templating language. And on top of that, you would also need to learn all the ins and outs of Shopify as a platform. So that is to say, configuring all the settings like taxes, shipping, creating stores from scratch, setting up good looking or professional looking front ends, knowing about the best themes you can use, knowing about different apps for different use cases or delivering services like store speed optimization, migrations, uh, code customizations and theme customizations. So then you would need to learn about theme files, Shopify sections, all these kinds of things. But once you become good at all of these, you're pretty much ready to hit the market. And from there, you would need to learn how to find clients, how to talk to them, how to position yourself, how to send a good proposal, how to price your services, uh, which can be a bit tricky or overwhelming, especially in the beginning. But I believe if you commit to learning all of these, that's one of the fastest ways how you can get to a sustainable income online. Okay, now how does this compare to apps? On this side, the first thing you would need is a good idea. Or to be more precise, you need to solve an in-demand problem because otherwise your app won't be in demand. And you also don't want to be guessing what the market wants. Uh, you need some sort of data or reference on this. And there are actually different ways to accumulate that. But honestly, one of the easiest ways would be that you have worked with real world clients before, because then you see or you get to experience firsthand what merchants struggle with. And if you notice the same issue across multiple clients, then it's very likely that there's like a bigger audience or a bigger pool of people having the same issue. And that would be the easiest market to tap into. Okay, now given that you have a good idea, then follows the technical implementation. And you would need to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript as well. Um, although I would say you need to learn JavaScript in much greater detail, but it depends a bit on the type of application you build. And then you would also need to learn about Shopify as a platform, not as much in detail as with freelancing, but you want to learn about uh, theme files, different features and the different APIs. And then you would also need to learn one backend technology or backend language. And this could either be Node.js or Ruby on Rails. Basically, it could be any backend technology, it could also be PHP or something. But these two are the most popular in the Shopify space. So I would recommend picking one of these. And then you might also want to learn a front end framework like React because that helps to build the interface of your app. And then you also need GraphQL in order to make API calls. So then you can communicate with the Shopify system and update or fetch data. And speaking of data, your app also might need a database if you need to store customer data, for example. Uh, but then you also wanna get into the basics of security because you don't wanna publicly expose that data or leak customer data. And then lastly, you would need to figure out your own hosting because your app has to run on a dedicated server. So all of this is pretty much the technical implementation. And from there, you can hit the market. So then your main tasks become marketing. You want to get your app in front of as many people as you can. You need to do customer support as soon as you get the first few installs. And it's going to be a little less if your app solely acts on the back end. And it's going to be a bit more if it also works on the front end, because then it has to seamlessly integrate with a lot of different themes. And eventually later down the road, you can build a team to outsource that or automate that or have something like a first or second level support. Uh, but in the beginning, you're going to do it all by yourself. And then you will have maintenance, like fixing smaller bugs. 
or you might also want to deploy new features. Yeah, so that's it for apps. So as you can see, this whole apps topic is quite complex. And that's also why inside free mode, we focus on the right half side of things because there we can get your results much more consistent and predictable. And I mean, we literally guarantee that. We have a 30 day money back guarantee in place. If anything feels off, you get your money back. So there's like zero incentive for me to sell you something that doesn't work. So keep an eye on that. And with that, I think we've accomplished the longest intro in the history of this channel, but I think it was super important. So let's get started. Hey, Jan here, codingwithin.com. Let's get straight to the matter at hand. Here's the infrastructure of what we're building today. So we're gonna have the Shopify site, we're gonna have our local PC, and we will have a dedicated server where our app runs. So for example, this could be myapp.com. And yes, you can imagine this to be just a regular website. And the only thing special about it is that only Shopify sites can log in here. And once they do so, they get to their dashboard, which contains all the functions and numbers and whatnot. And even though this might look similar to the Shopify admin dashboard, we always have to keep in mind it's not. It's myapp.com and it's a completely detached website and it only looks similar to create this cohesive design experience and like the best user experience. And when someone goes to their admin dashboard and clicks on apps and then opens our demo app, what really happens behind the scenes is all this authentication process and then Shopify just embeds our website, myapp.com, into their website with an iframe. So they just display our website inside their website. And that way, as a user, we can kind of interact with both and we will get more into the technical details. But for now, this will be good enough to get started. Okay, now besides that, we also need to prepare a couple of things in advance. And one thing is your Shopify partner account. You can sign up for free. And then you also want to create a development store. That's a store where you can test your app. Mine is called how to write an app. And as you can see, I currently don't have any apps installed. And then the last thing we're gonna need is the Shopify app CLI. That's an additional piece of software that helps to prototype these kinds of apps. And here you can find the installation process and the requirements. So for example, you need to have Ruby installed on your PC and don't get confused here. We are not building a Ruby on Rails app. We are building a Node.js and React app, but the app CLI is just built on Ruby. So in order for us to use that, we gotta have Ruby installed. And then you can just follow the installation process for your operating system. And just like with every other installation, there are certain things that can go wrong, certain warnings, certain error messages, but then you would just have to research these because with every project, there's a certain amount of research involved and you really have to get into this problem solving engineering type of mindset. That's super important or, or actually it's a minimum requirement. And then you're also gonna need a local code editor. You can use pretty much anything except Windows Notepad. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is pretty much industry standard. Okay, so now with all of that in place, I have a new folder on my desktop, and now I'm gonna open that with Visual Studio Code. This has the main benefit that as soon as I bring up the terminal, the working directory will be set to my new folder. Now, so let me show you that. So you could either hit Control, Shift, and P, or you could also click on this little gear icon, Command Palette, and then I wanna view the integrated terminal. So you can see my working directory is set to desktop slash app. And then as a first command, we wanna type Shopify create. We wanna build a Node.js app. Uh, now we have to enter an app name. So maybe we could just go with demo app for now. You can decide whether you wanna build a custom or public app. Uh, we will go with public app. Now it gives you this URL to authorize with your partner account. So let's follow that. So now I just log into my partner account, authenticated successful. We can now close this page, let's do it. And then you can select the specific partner account because I have two in here. So for all the YouTube videos, it will be coding with Jan. And then you wanna select the demo store. So for me, that's how to write an app.myshopify.com. And now we just have to wait for all of that to finish. Can take a couple seconds or even minutes. So I'll see you then. And now it already registered the app inside our partner dashboard, but not inside our development store yet. So what I wanna do next is type Shopify surf. That brings up
Ah, sorry, we have to navigate into our demo app folder first. So let's do CD demo app. And then let's run Shopify server again. So this looks a lot better. And what I was about to explain is that Shopify serve brings up our app server. And the only difference is that for now we don't have this myapp.com domain and we're actually hosting it on our local PC. But once you deploy the app, you want to push it to Heroku or any other web hoster. And here it's asking us to create a tunnel to our local PC because we don't have the public web server yet. So let's hit yes. So now our server is running and we can install our app by clicking this link here. And actually this ngrok URL is our myapp.com domain. Only looks a bit different and you gotta use your imagination. Uh, but yeah, that's the tunnel to your local PC. So let's click on that. So here it redirected me to our development store and let's go ahead and install that app. So there we have it, our very first Shopify app with Node and React. First, how cool is that? Second, I could also show you the iframe. So let's go to inspect. And there we have it, an iframe pointing to our local PC through the ngrok tunnel. And let me also show you what happens when you try to bring up this URL outside of a Shopify store. So let's get a new incognito and try to visit that. Then you would immediately see shop undefined and then it can't access the site. Okay, so far so good, pretty cool. But what's next, you may be asking. Excellent question, and it really depends on what you want to do next. So, if you never used Node.js before, I highly recommend checking out my video on automated testing frameworks because there I have like a small introduction to Node and NPM. I could tell you more about the different packages used here. We can talk more about the Shopify app bridge, which is used um, to enable communication between this frame and the main frame because usually iframes can't easily communicate with each other. Or we could talk about GraphQL, like making GraphQL calls with the Apollo client. Uh, we could talk about routing with Next.js. We could talk more about React, like how we can modify the content of this page. So you could add a little test here. And then it would appear right here. We can talk more about Polaris, which is a collection of different React components that will help you to build these Shopify looking interfaces and elements. Or we could also talk more about React in general, or I could tell you more about the server side of things. Uh, we could set up our own routes and maybe even build our own API. We could talk about webhooks. So there are a thousand different things that we could cover and just let me know what you wanna learn next. I also have a few other videos planned, but we can have an app video in between every now and then, it would actually be a lot of fun. And then I would say this was a pretty good start and I hope that was something helpful. If you're looking to become a freelancer, keep an eye on free mode for a more structured and guided format. And then I also found this very insightful article on how to like a YouTube video. And I don't think we need this part here. So make sure to check that out and then I'll see you in the next. Bye.